I'm not sure, as always. <laughs> I had to make sure this is going, dude. I don't know what's what with this. If you can hear me, uh, let's see if I'm live on this. Um, all right, there we go there. All right, guys, I don't know. It looks like it might be a little choppy in the beginning. I think that's Google Hangouts. I'm not sure. But uh, let's see what we end up with here. Uh, la, la, la. All right. All right. So if you can hear me, it looks like maybe there's one person in here for now. I don't know who it is. If it's if it's Jaybird, say what's up. Another somebody else. Welcome. How you guys doing? So uh, I got this uh, car here. <laughs> this will be something to share, I guess. Uh, this guy has 35 percent and wants to go to a 50 percent if you guys can't hear me if you can't hear me please type it in the uh, thing here um in the chat there let me know in the chat there so uh i got my steamer plugged in here we can talk a little bit about that and I'm going to have to test and see what we got here. I basically talked them out of changing the back window because there's really no point in taking 35% off uh, and putting 50% on a back window when the state legal limit for the back window is 35% anyways. Um, and so it really doesn't make any sense to do that. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. I talked him out of that, but I got my, my, uh, I got my, um, if you can see it here, we can talk a little bit about this. So, uh, if you guys are doing, you know, if you have a steamer, you, you should have a steamer. If you don't have a steamer, um, if you're doing this professionally or at an amateur level and, you're doing quite a bit of work and you're running into uh, I've had people get mad at me before for explaining this but uh, if you're doing enough window tinting where you're periodically running into uh, the need to strip windows take off the old film put new film on then you definitely definitely want a steamer you can use the plastic bag method. That's where you peel the film off. If it comes off in one piece, fantastic. Spray the glass with multi-purpose cleaner and then put the film back up and let it sit and soak for a while. Maybe pull it back down, spray again, put it back up. You can use that method. Trust me, it works. Um, but I've, I've, I've told this to different people before and I said, the professional method for stripping window film is to use a steamer. And I didn't mean any harm or foul. I wasn't trying to be a dick. But the point was is that this is a far more efficient, uh, far more consistent, uh, far more successful way of stripping window film. It just is. And I'm not trying to be a dick or nothing like that. I'm just letting you know that if you're going to be doing this professionally and you're going to be stripping windows and you want to make the most money for your time, you want to get paid uh, what you, you know, what you deserve to get paid, then you want to have a steamer. Okay. And now this is a uh, Jiffy. What is a Jiffy? Uh, I don't know what the model number is of this here. Let's see. This is a Jiffy Steamer, a model J4000. This thing is a professional grade steamer that is designed and meant to be in operation in a garment or a clothing uh, type uh, setting, type of a business. This is the kind of steamer. It's a full metal housing, full brass uh, container. Uh, uh, commercial grade heater and replaceable parts right this steamer is about a four three four hundred dollar steamer depending on when you buy it and where you buy it but this is the steamer to kick all other steamers asses basically is what it boils down to 
if you're buying cheap steamers at the store, you know, they burn out, you might need a new one every year or two. This is a good steamer that you won't have to worry about. You can let this thing sit and run all day and for constant operation and, and that type of a, of a thing. So this is the kind of steamer that I recommend that I use. It has much more hot, uh, much more consistent heat and it works fantastic. So what I'm going to do, I think before I start doing anything, and I suppose what I can do is I can uh, try to share this. So let me get my uh, let me get my tripod out here. I still have yet to. I got some GoPros that I'm working into the mix here, but I still don't have them ready to go. And so uh, what I'm going to end up doing is a live stream, but at the same time I'm going to get some close up, uh, you know, good. GoPro image sh uh, shots that I can develop a more, uh, let's just say, a more professional sort of training module type of a setup so uh, people can go on my website and join in and they can uh, vi view the tight shots and the much more informative, edited uh, stuff. I told you I'm working on something quite a bit different than what anyone else is doing in this industry. So um, be be uh, aware of that. There's going to be, I'm not just trying to say, hey, go join my website because I'm cool. Uh, go and join at my website, learn how to tint carwindows.com. So you can have access up front when I get this all working. Uh, you can have access. Bear with me on the camera. You can have access to all these training modules because this is going to be something different than anybody can go and watch YouTube videos and I'm not slamming anybody doing YouTube videos, but I'm putting something together that's going to be far, far more uh, beneficial. So just give me a second. This thing, uh, give me a second here. All right, I got to get this thing screwed in here. Now, I'm going to show you some stripping here. What, what I got to do. All right, I got this thing up here. Just bear with me here. I know uh, other people aren't really. So let's see, let's see, what can I do here? I think I'm gonna shorten these legs on this tripod and get you right inside so you can see some uh, stripping there. Hold on, I had a set screw come out on me, which is a little nerve wracking. One second here, guys, this is gonna be worth the wait. All right. So we'll get, I'll get a little bit tighter in there here in a second. Um, I got to put this set screw back in. All right, we got that. So uh, maybe we can even get in here a little tighter. Let's see what we can do here. I know. All right. I got to extend this leg a little bit. Bear with me here. All right. All right. So hopefully that'll work. You can see there. Got your you guys got his smell goods in here. I'm going to get rid of those if I can. All right. And uh, All right. So uh Let's I'm going to put this thing on for steam and I'm just going to I'm just going to get in here and see how this film reacts. Now I actually did this car for the dealership prior to uh the car selling and um now this guy wants you know a swap. He wants to go from 35% to 50%, which in my estimation is a complete and utter waste of time. Uh, but, you know, and I'll try to help somebody save money if I can. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to rip people off. And that's basically what I feel like this is, is just ripping people off when you're going to give them such a marginal change and 
they're going to spend such a, a you know a decent sized chunk of money uh, for for what they're going to get. It's just it doesn't make sense. So um, JY says, uh, what's your opinion on the trash bag method for rear, rear go? Hey, dude, it's fantastic if that's the if you don't have a steamer, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I don't recommend that you go to Target and buy a steamer. Um, I, I would actually, you know, let's say you put a budget together and you're going to save up a little bit of money. Maybe you're going to take 25 bucks out of each car and save up for a good steamer. I found this steamer on Craigslist, bro. You can watch Craigslist, get an app, and put a search in there that you can save or even have notifications for so that when you uh, when somebody posts one of these, you can get it or just go on eBay and, uh, you know, sh shop that way. Go on eBay and, uh, and get yourself a deal on a used one of these. If you find a used one of these that's working, I mean, you, I don't think you can go wrong. They're literally bulletproof. They're they're the best uh, steamer that money can buy, and so that's my recommendation for you. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to heat this up a little bit. I don't know how you guys do these here, uh, but I'm going to show you the method I use. And I'm not always I'm open if somebody has a better method than I do. But the trash bag method works. It just really depends on how old the film is how much time is going to be required for the adhesive to soften enough. And it's just more work is really what it boils down to. It's just more work. And uh, I really would rather just steam it because honestly, 90% of the time, it's just so much, so much better. Now this, now I'm, now I'm liking what I see here. So you can see this, right? I, the film is so fresh and new. I'm going to charge for stripping because I'm getting paid for what I know, not always for, you know, how much work I'm putting into a, a car. And there's also, you know, another way to look at this is like, uh, you know, you win some, you lose some. So some cars I might work an extraordinary amount of time on and I might not get paid what I'm exactly worth. But some cars, I get a break and I make a little extra. So you win some, you lose some. And uh, actually, on this one here, uh, a lot of the adhesive did stay up there. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to scrub some of this off, which is uh, okay. I mean, I really don't get too excited about it, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm going to sw swivel this around here, and we'll take a peek at this side. And I'm going to kind of do the same kind of a deal here. And actually, no, I'm not, because my steamer's not going to reach. So bear with me. I got all this stuff in the way. So I hope that it helps you out, man. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to come into this hangout and shoot the breeze. I can give you the actual uh, link here. Let's see once. Uh, I think, and we can try this. If anybody wants to come in and shoot the breeze and ask questions and hang out, that's really kind of what I'm looking for. There's a link in the chat box there. If you have a mic and uh, if you have a camera or even just a mic, uh, you can come in and let's give it a shot. You can... Uh, Join in on this hangout and actually be on here. And uh, yeah, let's try it out. If somebody's got the enough uh, enough guts to do it, I'm up for it. I know it's a little nerve wracking, and I know people don't want to put themselves out there all the time, but whatever. If you're down, that'll be cool with me. All right, so I'm going to carefully get back in here. I got my steamer over here now. Normally, I would just take the steamer, and I would take the little pole off of it, and I would put it right inside the car. And so I have, you know, access to the back window. But I'm not doing the back window, and uh, I got this camera in here. So I'm going to show you how I strip these back windows. And what, you know, the other thing with the steamer is, is when you do have to scrub adhesive, I mean, it's just night and day. It's just absolutely night and day. So 
I don't even, <laughs> it's like the plotter. I'm so spoiled with the plotter now that I won't even, I, don't, I think if my plotter broke, I would just take off, order a new one, and then I would work again on, when, it, when it comes and I got it ready because I literally just hate uh, cutting by hand if I don't have to now. It's spoiled me, but so uh, if you guys can see that, um, it's, it's leaving adhesive behind. So that's kind of why I talked them out of the back window because I'd have to take the deck out and I'd have to do a whole bunch of extra work. And I don't, it's not going to give that much benefit for the customer. You're changing from 35 to 50. It's like, man, it's, it's so close. Let me, let me show you how this works then. I'm going to get myself a piece of four rot steel wool. Um, and I'll just, I'll show you how this works in there. So I get myself a piece of 4 out steel wool. I don't know, maybe if, maybe if there's a beginner here, uh, they don't know what that means. So when, uh, when you guys, I hope you can still hear me. I had some kind of uh, beeping there. Are you still there? Uh, I think you're still there. All uh, right. Okay, I'm still on. Um, so uh, when you buy steel wool, right, on the bag, there's a, a measurement system for the how coarse the wool or the steel strands are. And uh, you'll have like zero, double zero, three zero, four zeros. Four zeros is generally what we use in the industry for scrubbing on the glass. We want to make sure that we don't scratch the glass. The same holds true for the scrubby pads. Once in a great while, uh, while, in a moderate way, I'll use um, like a green scotch bright for certain things, but very rarely and very, uh, very carefully. So now I have some adhesive there. And uh, so that's how you can, you know, know that you're getting the right steel. Well, look at the rating. Look at the four zeros. Four odd. That means four zeros. And you'll have the right stuff. And uh, there's a couple of ways I'll go about this. So you can see when you heat it up, literally, I just I just took a bunch of adhesive off there. It's just it's literally that easy when you have a, a steamer. So, like I said, I mean, you can use razor blades on here and shave it off the old-fashioned way. And sometimes I'll do that. Like if I'm in a pinch and I got to strip a little something. Maybe I'm only doing one window. I'm not going to put all the time and effort into firing up my steamer to do that, you know, small, you know, one window redo or something. Then I'll just use the razor blades and the old fashioned method. You spray the window down and you make sure you got sharp, fresh razor blades and you uh, scrape and wipe on the paper towel, scrape another path, wipe on the paper towel, um, I will use that method sometimes, right? But look at this. So the whole window's done. It virtually had all the adhesive on there. I mean, the, the film came off and it left, I would say about 70% of the adhesive was there, right? So now this window is, uh, it's ready, man. I mean, uh, it's scrubbed. I'm going to. I'll probably go over it uh, a real quick pass right before I install, but I, it's 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 clean, right? It's clean. It's done. So uh, another thing with the steamer is what you'll see, and let me make sure I got. Can you see me? Uh, I think you can see. So their moisture builds up in the in the hose. And you want to kind of take the hose to its lowest point and, and get all the water out of it. And uh, so I'm not sure if you can really see that good. But if not, you get the gist of it. You got to empty. You'll notice the steamer will start to gargle when there's a lot of moisture inside of the hose itself. And what that'll do is it'll basically suck up more of the, of the, of the uh, steam itself. So when the, when the hose becomes full of uh of moisture of water it'll minimize the amount of steam coming out and it'll make the job take longer so periodically 
I will go ahead and I will uh, I will empty the steamer hose itself out. So you want to kind of take where it comes out of the machine, and you want to uh, you want to just empty it out. It's kind of like if you oh here it is. It's kind of like if you have a garden hose and you want to make sure you're gonna put it away for the winter maybe. And you want to make sure every last bit of moisture is out of it. Sorry if that fog, yeah. Then you're going to kind of go from one end of the garden hose to the other, and you're going to make sure all the moisture is out of it. Well, you're going to do the same thing with the steamer hose. Because otherwise, it really won't work as good as, as you want it to. So, uh, doesn't look like anybody's got, nobody wants to join in here. That'd be the coolest thing I'm actually, that's kind of what I'm actually interested in doing here is having a hangout, having some people to shoot the breeze with, maybe some other professionals that are, you know, doing what they do and I could get to know you. We could build a little, little community. It would be cool. But so far, no takers, no takers, which is, I understand maybe you guys are busy. Um, so feel free to ask any questions there in the chat. I'd be happy to give my advice. So uh, that's it, guys, right there, right? That window is now completely free of adhesive. I'm going to just do a real quick general pass to uh, get the water out of the way that might be there. I don't want any little particulates to dry in place. I'm going to get the uh, surrounding surfaces kind of dried up for just now. And I actually feel pretty confident about that. Uh, but I will. I see a little something back here. I will go over that again before I install. So we got those done. Let's, let's, oops, sorry about that. Oh, hang on. All hell's breaking loose here. It's Armageddon in here right now. <laughs> All right, hold on, man. Hold on once. Let me get this thing out of here. So uh, there's a little, little, uh, little bit of a, uh, and maybe I can go. I'm gonna try to set this up here for the next setup here, guys. Bear with me here. I think what I want to do is have these extended all the way again now. Bear with me, man. I know this isn't the most exciting when I'm fiddling around with the camera, but I really, honestly, to do this the best way possible, I need a cameraman. And uh, I may do that in the future here. But uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not set up for that right now. So I got to make sure I put my little cord out of the way so it's not sitting in water. I'm in the middle of winter conditions here. I bring these cars in, and I've got to, uh, I've got to uh, thaw them out. I basically got to wash the car, get it thawed out. Um, it takes a bunch of extra time, and so it leaves me with a bunch of moisture and water on the floor. Uh, let me see here. JY says uh, it would be pretty dope if we could send an email to you. With a video of us tinting and you critique and correct us. Uh, brother, stick around. Uh, keep plugging in here. Go to my website, learn how to tint car windows, uh, dot com, and subscribe there because I also have a Facebook group. It's uh, Tint Academy. Tint Academy. That, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that that is uh, something that I uh, am interested in doing. I'll just say that for now. And that's, uh, what are you, uh, what's your deal, bro? Are you a professional tinter? Are you an, uh, just a guy interested? Uh, I, what's your story? Um, I have uh, brother Jaybird. It's funny, the other guy that actually participates here with me, um, his, his initials are, his handle is, starts with a J as well. So we got Joe, we got JYs, we got Jaybird, we got 
uh, all Jays in the house. Um, so uh, bear with me, man. I'm setting up my goods, my 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 setup here. Yeah, I want to do that. I want to help people uh, uh, get where they need to go. And there's no, I've said it before in here, but there's no real certification in this industry, right? You have these, you know, you might have a, a big company like 3M with a three-day training program and, uh, ooh, a three-day certificate. But you don't have any ability for anybody to really build a resume and show that they know what they're doing. And so I've got an idea. I've got a goal. I've got a plan for that, right? I'm working on something. So uh, now I've moved the keys to this car into a secret location that I don't even know of. Here they are. <laughs> you guys do that? Ever do that? It's like common thing in the tint business. I make sure usually that I only put my keys in like one of two places either on the dash with the doors open, obviously, or uh, sometimes I will put them uh, on my desk over there. So I, I don't want to have them in too many. I'll see if this thing can move. I don't want to put the keys in too many different spots. So I think uh, I'm just going to crack into this here in the, in the center. Now, can you see that? Yeah, you can see it all right. It's not the greatest, uh, but what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to heat this a little bit. I just made a little peel in the center, and sometimes I'll, ch I'm going to try this without a lot of heat once, because sometimes the heat will actually separate the adhesive from the film, and you know what? I think just a little bit of heat might be better in this particular instance here. I have... This is pretty, I don't, I think this film's only been on here for a little bit. There's, it's just a little heat is being helpful here. Too much is making the adhesive uh, want to separate from the film itself. So I'm kind of gauging here. Yeah, you can see. I'm kind of gauging how much heat to put in because I don't want to put so much that the adhesive separates from it's kind of an interesting thing, right? But the uh, the window film, you have the adhesive that's touching the glass, but then there's an um, there's a mounting adhesive uh, to keep the adhesive that touches the glass onto the film, and so that's why some films will retain the adhesive and some films will release the adhesive in different levels. Um, because there are, you know, and there's also adhesives in between the uh, different layers of the film. So you'll see sometimes uh, the adhesives will fail in that regard. And you'll, you can actually see a little bit of this here if you look at it. I don't know. You can see right here. I'll, I'll bring it a little closer. But you can see where the different layers have separated right there. Uh, I don't know if you can really see that good. I'll show you a close up when I get this off. So I'm not, I don't want to put too much heat on this particular film. I'm noticing that it's not, it's not beneficial to me to, for me to get it too hot because the, the adhesive is staying on the glass then when I get it too hot. So, but look at how nice this is, man, compared to, now it always, it isn't always this way. Trust me, sometimes the adhesive stays on the glass and I got to deal with a whole bunch of adhesive and I have to scrape it or scrub it the old fashioned way. But I tell you what, my old method of removing film was peel up a little corner and then rip the whole piece of film off and leave the adhesive there. <laughs> so then every single time you're dealing with all the adhesive and that was completely not efficient. It made every single job a, a process of having to remove all the adhesive in a thorough sort of, uh, you know, very monotonous, very tough manner. And this is just like there's only a little bit of adhesive that was left here. Nothing really to speak of. 
Um, and virtually, I see I got a little chunk here. Um, so that's just a little heat, and it's basically eaten right off. Now, one of the things that I'll do here, and I know Jaybird's familiar with it if he's on. I'm not sure if he is. He hasn't commented. Um, but what I'll do is I want to make sure that this uh, is free of any little chunks of adhesive. And there's no better way. I see I got one here. There's a chunk of adhesive here. I wouldn't have known unless I felt it. There's something there. Uh, there's a little bit here. So if otherwise I got to go through the whole process of removing the film. And if I just use my hand, it's I can feel the majority of that stuff and make sure that it's... Uh, Free of any chunks. I got something here. I got a little chunk there. All right. And I'm actually, I'm going to pop these panels too. Definitely the best, easiest way to go about that. So while I got you in here close for the close-up shot, I might as well, I'll finish, I'll do this little window here. And for now, I'm just going to do a quick squeegee job here. Get rid of this, this dirty, nasty water uh, that is definitely contaminated by the steel wool. The steel wool is like, it instantly starts to rust. So you can't really reuse a piece of steel wool once it's been wet. It'll be rusty by the next day, and it'll leave little particulate. Uh, that you can't really that you don't want to deal with it, it, it'll it'll contaminate your your uh, tint jobs so once I even get one drop of water on something like uh, a piece of steel wool I'm just done with it I'm not gonna save it because it's not worth me trying to save you know 10 cents and maybe contaminating a you know a two dollar chunk of film or whatever it might be or uh, even more if you're doing a back window. All right, so uh, I'm just going to steam this off, same manner. You don't want to pull too fast. You kind of want to let the, let the film release by itself. And I've got a good example here of the delamination, so I'm going to show you that. Oh, yeah, a real nice little chunk. So... Uh, this is a good example. Um, it might have went back and stuck to itself again. But here, if you can see this, right? This is the layers separating. And it's literally adhesive failure between the layers itself. Okay, so you can see how that's kind of ripped like that. Uh, I don't know if you can see real good, but... So that's an example of, you know, there's adhesives and there's the different types of adhesives, even in the same piece of film. A lot of times we think of it like, oh, yeah, there's just the adhesive that sticks, you know, to the glass. But there's other adhesives involved. There's mounting adhesives involved to hold each layer together. And uh, there's an, e even a, a different kind of adhesive that the adhesive, I know this is like a tongue twister, but. The adhesive that goes against the glass is being held on the film with a different mounting adhesive because they obviously they want that side to be stronger, right? So they want, and this is this is a science involved with uh, paint protection film too, is uh, they're constantly trying to find what adhesives will hold the adhesive that touches the surface onto the film better than another so that when you go to take it off, you're not leaving all that adhesive on the paint because now you got to scrub and do all these things on the paint then. So anyways, I don't know. Last week when I did that, uh, maybe the guy's in here again. Maybe he'll say something. But uh, 
uh, somebody made some comments and put a little couple logos in there. And I was thinking about these logos for the last, I think what he was saying was I was a, a windbag or a fart bag or something. I don't know. Sorry. Right, let me, let me pop these door panels. I'll show you these door panels. Um, let's see if anybody's got any, anything to say here. All right. So, uh, all right, brother. So you subscribed last night. That's cool. It takes you about four hours to do a sedan, so I'm still a beginner. Yeah, don't worry about time right now. I know what I'm doing. I just need more hands-on to perfect the craft. That's it. Yeah, just stay focused. Oh, yeah, here's this guy again. Uh, Viralis.tv. I don't know what the hell this stuff means, bro, but I'm, maybe I'm electric and I've, I'm, I, I don't know. I got sunglasses on. I have no idea. Fill me in on that, brother. I have no idea what that means. Um, it's probably because I'm maybe because I'm 44 and I don't really know all the like the text emojis and all that kind of stuff. Sorry, but uh, anyways, I love you, man. Whatever it means. All right, so let me pull my tools in here. Now this this particular door panel. This is a two-door Honda Civic. The year is uh, a 2013. There is this particular silver covering here that I'll take a pick, and I'll I want to kind of pick behind. It's going to leave an indentation in this silver piece, so I want to pick in there in a place where people aren't going to be looking. All right, and then what I'm going to do is pry carefully from behind, and this thing is going to come off. All right, this is really a straight, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to leave that handle in place. Be actually, no, I'm not on this one. Uh, there's a little cover there. There's a little tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go pry in the back of it, and I'm going to depress this little tab, get that out of the way. So I got this little cover out of the way. And uh, this is really worth every second of your time because now I don't have to shrink the pieces. I, don't, I can bottom load. Uh, it's really... There's two screws. Actually, there's three screws. There's one here, one there. Uh, I, and there's one that's tough to see. So I got my little little flashlight deal. And we'll put that in a way so I can line up with the threads. Then I'm going to keep this screw on the driver here. So I'm going to use that to mount. So, yeah, if you're just starting out, and I'm going to just reach under there, pop this panel. Uh, actually, I could leave this one. I am going to leave this one. Uh, where's the screw for that? I'm going to mount this door handle one back in place uh, because it separates from the door panel, and it makes it a lot easier. Then I just get this thing, pop it out of the way. I'm going to put it back in its position and line up where the, where the snaps go in place. And then I'm just going to put one screw in, uh, did I get it? I think so. One screw back in place so I can uh, have the door panel. The door panel is held in place, but now I got this whole gasket out of the way and I can drop bottom feed that piece in there beautifully. It'll make sure I don't get no dust and dirt over here creases i don't have to do the two-part top uh top loading process which is more prone to creases and dirt in the areas like here and here so that's how that is so let me switch this around i'm going to go on the other side here and uh we'll do do these other ones here bear with me hope you guys are enjoying uh if not, then what the hell are you doing in here? <laughs> you know, I mean, if you're not enjoying it, then I don't know why you're here. I'm sure you are, though. I'm just messing around. So, uh, okay, let's uh, let's go to the other side. If if you guys are cool with it. Uh, all right. So I think I'm gonna move my thing here and get the best possible. I don't want to be too. Let's see what I got here. Bear with me while I set this stuff up, guys. I know it's not the most exciting thing. 
All right, that's kind of cool. That's good enough. Um, all right. So you subscribed. Okay, I will check the. I'll check. Uh, you subscribed at the uh, at learnhowtothinkcarwindows.com and subscribe to the email list. That's where you want to be. There's nothing there yet. It's just a placeholder website. I threw all that together just quickly to just have a little presence there. I'm really. I work 50 hours a week. I got a newborn baby. I I'm setting up an S corporation for the business. I'm building three different websites. I'm doing Facebook advertisement. I'm doing uh, some email list stuff. I'm trying to. I don't know. We'll see if I can get anything done. But so I'm. I just started to record a fresh video content for that website and I'm going to put together modules and JY you, you kind of hit on something there I'm not I'm not really going to expose too much but uh you know what I don't even care I, I'm going to I'm going to set it up just in the way that you uh you mentioned there I'm going to have it so that people can go in participate in the module and then be uh make a video of them doing the work and then be critiqued and graded and build a resume and build an online video resume. And I don't even care if somebody wants to copy and go and do that same thing. Go ahead. There's enough work. And I'll I'll be blessed in what I'm doing. So we can both do it. But uh, that's really what this industry needs. Is this industry needs some sort of uh, mentorship. Almost like a journeyman type uh, apprentice uh, program where you can actually learn and be a part of a, a program and uh, partake in trainings and then practice what you've learned and document what you've learned and show your progression show that you've actually you know you're you're honing this skill and now you can go into a uh, tint shop somewhere and you can look online in certain places that I'll disclose later. And you can say, oh, look, they're looking for a tinter over here. And you can, you know, apply, show your qualifications and go and get a job. Uh, you know, get some experience for a few years, for up to five years and then start your own gig. That's the point of this. Otherwise, you know, there's a lot of people on Facebook, and I really love them. I like what they're doing. Um, I mentioned before that Patrick dude. I really, I'm gonna get in touch with him. Hey, Patrick, if you see this, uh, get in touch with me. I wanna, I wanna hook up with you, and I got some ideas about something I'm gonna be doing, and I'd like to talk with you. And uh, I like what you're doing, and I like your humbleness and the approach, and the fact that you're explaining things to people because there's a whole lot of YouTube videos where you can go and watch and there's not really a lot of narration and you don't really know the theology or the reasoning behind what's being done and you really can't learn from it without your own trial and error which we there's some of that that's needed anyways but it's better if I can explain why I'm doing what I'm doing in a manner that you can benefit from so you don't have to make those mistakes right it's like how a parent raises a child, you want to kind of t show them, hey, I already messed up doing that. Don't do that. Do this, and you won't have to have the problems that I had, and it'll be easier, and it'll be better. It'll be more profitable. Um, and I, that's the whole po purpose of getting into this. I mean, cars are cool uh, for a while. Yeah, it's cool. You're working on cars, and your buddies will think you're cool. But after a while, it becomes about career and income and savings and doing things properly so that it's as beneficial efficient profitable and all that stuff so whatever but yeah that's what I'm looking at doing this one came off really good I'm gonna grab my water here and see uh, I probably should have popped that panel I, I would work in a much more efficient sort of systemized manner when I'm kind of focusing by myself alone but while I'm sitting here blabbering to you guys the whole time it's kind of different it's a little bit different setup so again the link is in that chat there if you want to come in here if anybody wants to join that hangout if you've tried 
and it's not working, uh, let me know. I, I might be able to come up with a different uh, link. I'm just checking this chat set up here to see if anybody has said anything else, blah, blah, blah. JY's uh, message retracted. I don't know what that means, brother. Uh, if you sent something and then maybe deleted it, maybe. I don't know. So uh, let's go here, and let's do the same thing. Now you can see what I'm doing. This has become one of the most important things that I do is feeling this glass with my hand and feeling for little uh, chunks of stuff. And I feel up here, I've got a little bit. And there's not a method that I feel more confident about uh, doing. If you're stripping windows and you're not utilizing the sensitive portion of your hand like this to feel for, just try it. Do it in all your all your cleaning uh, prep. Anytime you scrub the glass, feel the glass with your hands and feel and look around for bumps. Basically, you're looking for contamination, but it just it's really fantastic. Then you can take your blade and kind of go down in the edges here. Look for uh, usually adhesive will come off. It'll look black. I just got myself a little chunk up in this corner. And so, yeah, it's going to be hard for you to see, but I got a little bit out of there, okay? So now let's go for this one last little window here before we back this camera up and then just go through the process of uh, installing some film here, I guess. Maybe I can do all close-ups today. I keep the camera off the thing and I already got it down I might as well just go and record and show close-ups of what I'm doing if I can um, so yeah if you guys uh, haven't yet if anybody new has jumped in or you're watching later uh, please I'm trying to gr uh, put a group together there isn't a whole lot of posts yet on my Facebook group tint Academy it's a group um, there's a business page and a group page. You want to sign up at the group page. And there's going to be, I'm going to be doing live streams there. Um, and I'm going to be building a presence there. And that's a place where we can all share and, you know, uh, ask questions and help each other out. There's literally nothing going on there yet. And so, uh, just go join it. Tint Academy. I changed the name on some of this stuff because it's a little bit easier to remember that learn how to tint car windows is a little bit kind of a lengthy thing. And I actually reserved that domain name a long time ago. And I thought it was cool because I thought that was going to be the keyword so people would I would rank higher, and really nowadays that doesn't matter. So, ah, I put my water back and I need it. All right, so uh, I'm going to actually just go over this uh, and finalize this, in, this cleaning a little bit better. All right. So uh, I still have to pop this panel again. Uh, are you guys popping panels? Uh, Jaywise, I know Jaybird started too, and that's that's awesome. That's the way to go. Jaywise, wondering if you're popping panels and doing the uh, bottom loading, or if you are uh, leaving the panel in place and doing. Uh, I'll do one. I can do one. I can do one with the door panel off too. But I'm wondering, are you uh, doing the top load or the bottom load is what it boils down to. Uh, top load is where you put the top on first. You have a little bit of cellophane still on the, on the film and the bottom's draping over a little bit. And then you roll, dry the top, roll it up, and then manipulate and tuck the bottom. That's the uh, top load position, top load procedure. 
and I did that for 20 years. So, all right, I'm throwing out my steel wool. Uh, let's, let's. I'm gonna back up for a while, guys, because I'm just gonna be preparing uh, film and stuff. So let's just see here. I'm gonna go right here. I now have to uh, cut some film, so uh, I'm just gonna give a general shot in that area. Hope that's cool. Uh, oh, okay, you deleted it. My bis JY says my biggest problem is side windows that shift uh, out of the seal when rolling them down. How do I tackle this? Okay, well, um, I'm assuming that you're cutting by hand. And I just made a cut video. There's others that Patrick has a good cut video that you could take a peek at. And he's showing you uh, how to oversize the piece if you're not yet uh, up to speed on that. But when you're cutting the piece, there is a certain amount of oversizing that must be done. If you're just cutting the piece of film to sort of like the finished uh, size equivalent to uh, gasket to gasket on the outside of the vehicle. So for instance, you're not trying to make an effort to oversize the piece so that when you install it, the edges are going into the gasket. That is a problem. Um, your finished piece should be oversized about an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch on each of both sides. Um, so let me let me show you here quick. I, I can just give a real quick demonstration. Um, and you can get an idea here. Bear with me here. So when you when you cut the piece right all right if you take and you lay the film and you got the film here and you only cut right up against this edge and that's it you cut up against this edge you cut this edge and you cut this edge same way you cut this edge just right up against the gasket now you have a piece that's only this big it's only as big as this exposed uh, chunk of glass. It's only this big. What you need to do is have a method where you're oversizing the piece in a systematic way, and that will leave it so you don't have those light gaps as often. Uh, the other thing, and I'll show you when I get going here, the other thing is, is when you position the piece of film on the uh, window when you're installing it, you want to make sure that you double check on the outside what your positioning is. You can even rock that piece, that window back and forth a little bit and just make sure that you're not gonna deal with that before you start squeegeeing the piece down, right? So there's a couple precautionary measures that you can use to uh, make sure that you're not going to run into that but you know it, I, that happens to me too that happens if you get lazy and you don't really check if i just slap a piece of film on a window and just i don't check on the outside to make sure that i have good coverage and make sure my position is right then that can happen to me as well i can run into that very issue so uh it's just you know cutting the piece properly making sure that you're oversized um just the right amount you don't want to be too oversized you don't want to cut your piece and be you know a half inch uh, oversized on on each of the sides not the top not the bottom but the sides you only have so much room to go and uh, slide that piece in there so you it's I, I say a quarter inch uh, on each side and I like to do an eighth of an inch or in that area on each side when I when I hand cut when I focus on oversizing the piece uh, an eighth of an inch on each of the sides is more than efficient to 
get inside the gasket but not too far inside the gasket. Uh, it leaves me where I won't have a light gap but it also ensures that I'm not going to be so far in the gasket where I'm going to be sucking water and a vacuum effect is going to be created and I'm going to have to worry about uh, contaminants and dirt, debris, dust, or whatever uh, re-entering uh, underneath the film and contaminating my work. So it's a fine balance of just really getting the right amount of coverage on the glass and that's going to be something that you're going to want to focus on is making sure that you cut that piece so that you uh, have the right amount of oversizing involved. So uh, I hope that helps you. Um, and again, uh, I know for a fact that Patrick over there at Window Tinting Business has a video about that out. And I'm not worried about you going over there and learning from him too. So uh, go and check it out. When I have my modules and my stuff up, I'll be happy to let you know. Um, and I know there's going to be an endless stream of future uh, window tinters that are going to want to learn. So in, I'm getting geared up for that. And I'm not really trying to be selfish and make sure people don't go and watch these other people. And I, I'm doing something completely different than what everyone else is doing, honestly. So go check out Patrick's uh, stuff over there. I like what he's doing. Um, I don't know. There's, there's a couple other guys that I feel are showing stuff and, and worth looking at. Um, I'm not sure if this piece, uh, bear with me. I'm actually behind the camera here fiddling around. All right. It's good. I'm just making sure that my my cut went properly there so unfortunately with the way I'm set up here right now and just doing this live gig I, it, it's it's more about uh, okay so yeah he says he's top loading man uh, mainly um, you're gonna wanna watch watch what I'm doing here and get too deep into uh, the, the top loading or too accustomed to doing it, you really want to do this bottom load, pop these panels. Most of these panels on these cars nowadays, they, you can get like a four door. I can get all the panels popped out of the way in 10 minutes or less. So that's what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to get yourself set up for that. Uh, it is absolutely the professional, more efficient, more uh, yeah, more professional. Your, your work comes out better. No dust, no creases, no headaches, no fiddling around with the gasket, no bubbles from the bottom, no fingers popping up, no shrinking of the film on the majority of the windows that I do. There's a few cars that I do regularly that need to be shrunk. Uh, for instance, New Accords, new Camrys, uh, some BMWs, and maybe a a few other uh, a few other types of, of vehicles. Um, so watch out for those. Those are ones you're gonna want to know how to stretch up front. And some videos uh, I have covered that in some of my videos here. So I am going to get this giant piece up here and I'm going to go through the process of peeling and setting this piece up here. I could show that, I suppose, if it's worth it to you. Uh, let's see here. We'll go over here. Why not? Uh, it's hard to see. I don't really have the right glass. This is another thing that I got to improve on is uh, this particular glass, it, being that it's see-through, it's not the right setup for this. I need to uh, put some white vinyl on the back of these um, pieces of glass, which I have in the plan. Uh, and then 
and then uh, you'll be able to see my pieces much much better but at the moment this is what I got so uh, all right so I'm gonna just weed out the unnecessary film I'm being careful because I have another piece down here and I want to make sure that uh, I have my blade. Now, I did replace my blade on my plotter and put a new cut strip, but it still is a little problematic. And basically, I have a new blade that's kind of getting seasoned. Uh, there's a certain amount of time. Like, when you put the new blade in, it's really sharp. It works really good, and then it, it kind of – it's it, takes a little time to kind of season it and get into a, a groove where it has a real consistent cut so I'm waiting for that to happen and then once I got it kind of seasoned and it's working really nice I don't know what other terminology to use but it takes a little while for it to really become uh, consistent and dependable and then it, I it'll be rock solid for up to a year one blade up to a year I mean it's pretty good so what I'm doing now is I don't know if you guys are cutting on glass but if you got one of these just it's just a a craft uh, they sell them at Tim tin supply outfits uh, they work nice this blade has been in here it's all rusty this blade's been in here for a year I don't put too much pressure because the, the edge will, will like roll over if you do that. All right. You see that piece is kind of hanging over. It's such a long. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to chop. I'm just going to chop that off of there and put it there. All right, and so this is the thing with this is it's like I got to double check. I, I, yeah, I grabbed the 50% because it's so close to the 35. It's like, I don't know why. The guy's an idiot. Honestly, you're just wasting money. Uh, here, let me, let me show you this. Where is this? That's the, that's the back. Let me see this. I don't even know. You probably won't be able to see it good. But look, this is 50 and 35 here. I don't know if this is going to be doable. But look at the white in my shirt. I mean, it's really, it's so close. I know it looks, it looks different a little bit on the car when it's 50 compared to 35 but it to me that's just not worth it and who the heck would want to this is a kid who wants to have 50 percent it's like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life I don't know but whatever everybody everybody wants what they want so I'm just gonna put this in here real I'm not gonna here oh uh, I wonder if I should try going off of this tripod once. Let's try it. I'm gonna throw these two pieces in, man. I got this off the key, off the thing. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna set this up in the car, and you can uh, get a good close up of what I'm doing. I think, or not too close, but better than what we're working with there. All right. All right, let's do that. At least you can see what's going on. I'm actually I've showed it before, but I'm working with a uh I'm working with a a Logitech webcam and then I made a makeshift extension cable with a active or powered 15 foot USB uh, cable uh, USB extend extension. It's 
got to be an active powered one. So it's got like a plug way up at the front. Maybe you know what it is, but I don't know. They want so much money for like live streaming equipment, like a, a live streaming uh, camera setup. I mean, you're 500 bucks minimum for a module that works only on certain stuff. And then you have to have a live stream account and then, it's like, you know, that's a big monthly investment. And it's like, man, I'm just trying to experiment and see what we can do here on a limited uh, limited amount of money here. So uh, I got to fill my bottles. You guys want to see that? I'll show you how I fill my bottles. What the heck? Uh, let's see. How could I do this without... Getting something wet and totally messing up here. I'll do it just the way it's set up on the computer here. <laughs> Is that going to work? I don't know. Uh, yeah, maybe. All right. Hold on a second. I think Jaybird wanted me to make a, a filing video. I could file these too if you want. Show you how I do it. I'm just kind of in the background here. I'm letting the air out of my my bottles. Typically the bottles, you know, they're kind of tough. They're hard to, uh, I get my hands wet so they're a little bit more sticky. And just give me a second here. I'm going to show you how much soap I put in these bottles. So I'm uh, I'm gonna put that there. All right. So uh, I like to, and I'm in the winter time here. I kind of like to. I like to first of all get all the suds out of there. I don't wanna. I want a clean, fresh slate here. So I, I rinse those out, get all the uh, suds out of there and whatever, if there's any, you know, little sedimentation or anything that may have been in there, which probably not, but could be. So then I'm going to uh, fill up to the max full point. And uh, I got my soap here. And I'm just basically using a specific dish soap right here, right now. Uh, so here's my bottles, right? Here's how much soap I'm going to put in. One 1,000. One 1,000. Maybe a little extra drop for good measure. And that's it. All right. And then I'm going to screw. Oh, oh. And then I'm going to screw my top on. And uh, tighten that. I like to dry the bottle. And tighten that up I can uh, bring you guys over here hopefully I didn't lose my signal and uh, yeah so I'll dry my bottle up here and then I'll just I want to get this bottle dry so I can lock it in my arm here and get the top really cranked on tightly uh, my gaskets are a little old now these bottles are about two years old one of them leaks a little bit, so I got to really make sure it's wrenched on there tight. And uh, so that's the method right there. Then I'll just shake up. I want to make sure that it, at the soap that's at the bottom isn't uh, going to go up my, my tube right away. So the warm water, it helps the soap to be broken down and evenly dispersed throughout the bottle. And it makes uh, it makes it so that I don't have to worry about uh, the uh, on my first squirt the uh, the soap sucking up the straw and all spraying out the the nozzle right away, which you may have experienced. I've experienced, and I don't want to have that, so I don't I don't do it that way anymore. Um, so I get it pumped up nice and and uh, tight there, about 20 pumps on that puppy and uh, 
that is it. So that is for you, Jaybird. That was a long overdue uh, a request he had a while ago that I didn't. I got so many things on my mind, man. I trust me, I would do anything for you, but uh, I haven't. Uh, so now I'm just gonna go over this one more time, just to be certain, right? It takes just a minute. And I want to make sure that I don't have any any leftover adhesive. Uh, one little chunk of adhesive is going to send my my brain into uh, doing a, like a damage control, and I'll be upset, and I don't want to deal with it. So I'm just going to make sure that I have. It takes another, you know, a second. Why not just do it? Go over it one more time. Make sure you've got a nice, clean surface, ready to accept your uh, film. And perfect. Going to do the same on the other side. I mean, a lot of what we're doing here is repetition. It's sometimes redundant. It's very ritualistic. It's, uh, it's, but it's a must. If you want to do this professionally, I mean, you can do this at the amateur level forever, but if you're pumping out windows with dirt and contamination all the time, it ain't going to be professional. Now, you might have a little dust and dirt all the time, very marginal. Piece of dust here, speck of dirt there, clump of adhesive here that you, you can heat up and iron out, and sometimes you get to rip film off and start over, but... That's it. That's it right there. I, I got that one set up. I'm going to load that puppy in there now. Just hang tight. I'm going to grab this. Let's see if anybody said anything. I top load manually. Okay. Three watching. That's cool. Whatever. Uh, if you guys want to join in, I got the link in the chat up above. You could literally be in this hangout. It's not much of a hangout with one person, but. It's mainly me running my mouth, which clearly I'm okay with. I don't have a problem with that. All right, so here we go. We got a piece of 50% there. Going to use my little yellow turbo on this particular window. I don't use it too often. I like to use my side swiper, uh, but I'm going to tack. First thing I'm going to do is tack down the top edge and get myself stuck to this ceramic around the edge because that's my anchor and the, if you notice what I did was I broke the window in half and I worked it basically this section and then two sections toward each corner all right and I might go over it a little bit more pressing a little little bit more firmly and then ultimately I'm going to grab a uh, a hard card with an old-fashioned uh, paper towel. It's not really a paper towel. It's a specific type of automotive towel that I use, and it's pink, and I don't know what the hell it's called. So I don't even – I'll do some research, and I, I'll figure it out so I can share it with you. Uh, I did a uh, – JY says, I did an 09 Camry, had problems laying the corner down after a, applying film to the quarter windows. Uh, maybe I used too much water. Yeah, well, I don't know what problem you had. Explain that. Um, what corner? The corner of the uh, of the little corner glass windows, like the one I'm working on now? Uh, which window were you talking? See, brother, if you joined into this hangout, you could just ask me, and I wouldn't have to read that. So the little window on the back door, that's what you're talking? The little window on the back door? Um, those are hard. Those are, those are, dude, those are probably the hardest windows that you're going to run into. I tell people that all the time. They think, oh, yeah, the biggest, the back window's hard and uh, this window's hard. The, little, the littlest windows are the hardest windows, especially those because they don't have any dot matrix. You're dealing with old-fashioned rubber technology, and they're hard to clean, 
And if you're just starting out, I don't know how many cars you have under your belt, dude, but I would just plan on doing those windows two, three, four times when you do a car like that. Uh, like for me, I even cut extras a lot of the time because on my plotter, I'm going to waste some film anyways. So I'll just queue up some extra windows on those. They're very common. Uh, commonly with those windows, there's problems with dirt contamination. There's very problematic in getting the piece situated in the right position and not having the edge exposed. And a lot of times when you go to install them, if your solution's not proper, you're going to have the piece sliding all over the place. And so you really th don't beat yourself up on that because you look at it and you're like, well, that's a small window. That should be easy. But those are those are the most difficult windows, in my opinion. You know, a back window is hard to learn how to handle if you're not doing it right. Um, I give you that. They're hard to put in. But once you have it in place, they're easy to squeegee. Uh, it's easy to get the moisture away from the edging. And it's it's just those little windows are really hard, dude. Um, and the corner, I would assume that your cut was maybe not the best or your positioning maybe wasn't the best. And what you ended up running into was your corner was bunching up against the the gasket way in there. And you weren't, it wasn't sitting down because you were too far in the gasket and you were actually touching uh, the gasket itself with the edge of the film, which in that particular instance, uh, I, I'll give you the best advice, and I'm sure any tinter out there that has that's a real professional that knows what they're doing, when you run into something like that, don't fiddle around with the piece of film. Rip it off and start over again. And because you could spend 20 minutes jagging around with that piece of film and still have to rip it off and start over. So it becomes uh, a, a wise decision in this industry to uh, know when to fold them. When you got something like that going on and you, you, you know that that's probably not going to lead to a, uh, a high quality uh, finished product, just rip it off and start over again. Is I, That's probably the best advice I could give you. I know that when I was starting out, I would spend hours fiddling around with windows to try to fix them when I could have just cut a new piece, made note of what it was that I did wrong, and I could have went and started a new piece, a fresh install, and did it right and had it done in half the time that I used and spent uh, fiddling around trying to fix a piece. So don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Uh, I've done three pickups. Pickups, I don't know what you got, what you've done. Uh, yeah, do the reverse roll, bro. That's the way to go, man. And plan on failing, dude. Plan on failing. Be a good failure at this, at this stuff. Uh, plan on having, plan on doing that back window, uh, two, three, four times and don't even sweat it when, when it's messed up. Get it on the glass, get it squeegeed out creases, dirt, everything that might be there, get it in there, get get the, get the full practice out of the piece of film itself. And then if it's not good, if it's not something you want your name on and you're uh, going to pull it off and start over, just pull it off and start over and don't even sweat it. I got some, I, I got adhesive down here. I can feel it. So I, when I stripped this, I didn't have this bottom edge exposed the way that I have it now. So I can feel that there's a little ridge along the bottom. And I'm going to take my knife like this. And I'm going to shave in there. And if I didn't feel the glass like this, the way that I do this, I would have never known that was there. Get in here. I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to scrape in there. I'm going to scrape in this edge here. And I'm going to roll this down a little bit more and I'm going to check again. And I found another thing here. And 
now I feel pretty good about it. I'm going to scrub it up and down again. All right. And now I'm going to uh, do a, a, a little pass around the edge, give my squeegee a good position, a good place to start, a clean squeegee job on this particular window. And I'm going to go this route. Yeah, pickups too. Uh, you mentioned you did some pickups there. I don't know what kind. If, uh, if even still, they're still making some pickups with rubber gasketed windows. It's not very common now. But if you're doing something a couple years old, you still run into that. And so the pickup windows can be very tricky too. They have those... Uh, those uh, gasketed windows, no ceramic, no black stuff around the edges, nowhere to hide the edge in some of them. Uh, I do mainly only new stuff, so I don't really run into that anymore. But they can be really tricky. The new ones that have ceramic, and those are a pleasure, man, compared to what I've done in the past. So I'm ready to bottom load here. Here, here goes the bottom load, brother. You see me take... Uh, See me take that uh, door panel out of the way and get that gasket out of the way. And now I'm going to drop this puppy in there. So uh, I'm getting my piece here. Just going to spray it down very liberally and make sure I got a good amount of moisture water there. I got good sudsy water. You notice how, I don't know if you can see it real well, but you can see my, my soap is hanging out. It's not you know, rolling down off, off the glass very easily. So that's going to help me. And now I'm going to get this front corner in place. I'm going to work in the top front corner. I'm going to bunch a little bit. I'm going to get this bottom back piece in there. You notice up in the front here, I'm bunched a little bit in a safe manner. So I'm not going to crease. I uh, am going to fold and bunch and, you know, I'm bunched up here. It's hard to see, but I'm not, the film's not smooth and flat. And I, I have to do that because that makes it so uh, I have enough. It basically makes the piece smaller, right? It makes it so I can have an easy time getting this in there. And all right, I'm going to file this a little bit for Jaybird. I'm, I'm, I'm going to just, uh, I'm going to do a little file job. I'm not going to go crazy here. Basically, uh, I'm going to put, put the piece over just a tad, all right, just a tad, and uh, all right, so I'm going to gently, now notice, now see my piece dropped, it dropped quite a bit, it dropped in the front, it dropped in the back, my soap is... So I'm trying to be very careful when I'm squeegeeing so that I don't move the piece, but it happens. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do now. I'm, now, see, look at what's happening for me here, Jay Wise. I, uh, I got this piece in position, right? But I'm able to squeegee the whole thing. I, look at how far down I can go in there. I can I'm I can go all the way down to the bottom of the glass no problem and I'm squeegeeing one piece uh, the whole piece in one shot um, and uh, I've got the top overlapped a little bit now I'm doing a second pass and this time I'm pressing a little bit more firmly uh, because I want to get as much moisture out of the way as I can I'm going to systematically go down. I'm going to dry my edge. I'm watching this edge. I'm making sure that that sucker don't move. If it starts moving, I can adjust my pressure. And I'm watching it. I don't want that to move. I can see I have moisture up there. It's, it's, a, it's kind of normal. But I didn't go over the edge so much that I can't sop up this moisture before I get ready to, to uh, file here. Let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a piece of paper towel here, and I'm going to lay my hard card in there. Yeah, you can see. And I'm going to go over this top in a way 
that I'm actually kind of rolling over the edge because I'm drying the moisture out of there that's going to get in my way when I file. Now I think the, the edge on this window, I think it already was filed, all right? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, same kind of pink card, one I have slip tape on, one I don't have. Slip tape's my best friend. Uh, if people, the other people say they don't like it, I, okay. I don't know. I don't know why or how, but okay. Uh, we don't always all have to agree, but I use it, and I'm, I won't go without it. It's so fantastic. It's so helpful. Whoa, that scared me. Okay. Uh, I'm going to need this again. But now I'm going to grab my files. I'm going to grab my heat. And I'm going to show a little file. So now what I got here, uh, and I don't know if Jaybird's even in here, but maybe later he'll watch. I am going to... Uh, All right, I am going to 2,000, and I'm just going to bring that heat into the center. I've kind of evenly distributed the heat. And I'm just counting in my head. Actually... I'm not even usually counting. I know how much, like, uh, so a Honda Civic like this has cheaper, uh, thinner glass that heats up really quick. So I don't want to, I'm not going to heat it up as long as I might on another car. Um, okay. And so now, I'm just checking where I'm where I'm viewing at here. So now I've got this whole top edge heated. A good practice for you if you're starting out doing this is just walk away. Let this window, I've already squeegeed the bottom because I'm bottom loading. This The bottom squeegeed pretty well. You could uh, spend a little extra time focusing on that bottom edge. And then what you could do is you could leave this sit. Go do the other window. Let this finalize and set up and be really nice. I know what I'm doing, so I know I'm good. But uh, I'm going to start at the edge. One of the things you want to be careful with, now I already know, I've got this little file, right? I've got these two files. Medium to fine thread on here that I shopped all over for. I literally took this file to a grinding wheel on a bench grinder and ground the corners off of it because the corners have a tendency to rip the film. So the first thing you want to do is go on a bench grinder and get these corners, these edges off of there. You don't want sharp edges on. They want You want them to be rounded so they're nice and, and, and uh, easy on the film, let's just say. Then I got this other little jeweler squeegee. Awesome. This one I actually get in the corners. So the two work together. So normally what I'll do is I'll, I'll get in this edge. And then I know I have my piece started. Because if I don't file what's in this edge very carefully, it'll end up pulling. It'll end up where I'm, I rip the film. So you've got to get this corner started just right and get it so that it's being filed outside. You want to visibly see the, the edge of the film kind of roll over the uh, the window and usually when I'm filing it'll go to the outside and it'll be a big long string when I'm done. So let me go through this and I'll show you. Very gently, not a lot of side to side action. More up and down action very gently. You get a feel for this and you'll see how uh, you need to do this. But really I can show you this there's some trial and error involved for you. So the main thing that you can do is make sure you have the right file with the right uh, coarseness, which is a medium coarseness. They're very hard to find. Uh, if you have a craftsman in your area, maybe even a, a machine shop supply place, 
uh, because usually at the regular hardware store, the files that you run into are very coarse. All right, then I'm going to feel the edge. I have a little bit of burr that I'm going to clean up. All right. All right, and I feel confident with that. The next thing that I'm going to do is uh, now the, the, the thread. This is what I filed, guys. Do you see this? Yeah, you can see that pretty good. This is what I filed. Now my edge is right up against the edge of the glass. Super professional, super seamless, very nice look. Uh, it's going to be really nice, and what I'll do is I'll come out here, and I'll wipe away some of the filing shards, whatever, the little leftover pieces, and I'm going to look at this and make sure that I like what I see uh, is, as far as uh, no little bubbles. So if I would have skipped that heating process, you're going to see this. When you go to file, you'll end up pulling the film away from the glass and you'll end up with bubbles and it'll be very problematic so you either want to do one of two things you want to file after you've let the window set up or you've applied a little heat in just the right manner or uh, you know, let the piece set up and walk away and go to the other side. I got somebody coming here at 3 o'clock. I forgot about that. Uh, all right, no problem. We're getting close. You might have to sit and wait a little bit. No biggie. So now I roll this up. I've got a little bubble there. You can't see it. Um, uh, one other little thing that I'll share with you is don't put your tools down in the car. Don't set your tools down in the car. These files, I could easily like set them in the carpet, on in the car or whatever. Put them down on the inside the car. You'll be guaranteed to lose your stuff if you do that. Make a habit of never setting your tools down in the car ever. A scrubby or a steel wool or a, a you know a, a bare razor blade, okay. Uh, but tools never get set down in the car ratchets screwdrivers these things don't put them down in the car keep them out of the car uh if you're inside the car working that's why i have a tool basket that i take into the car nothing gets put down unless it gets put into the basket otherwise i guarantee you you'll be losing stuff don't buy expensive tools buy cheap tools from uh, Harbor Freight or cheap, you know, Chinese, you know, socket sets and stuff like that. You don't need no fancy, expensive tools to do this job, and uh, you'll be you'll be in much better shape. When you lose a ratchet set that's only you know five bucks, you won't be crying. You won't be upset. So here's one of the things I mentioned before. Now you can't see. Uh, but, Jay was I'm checking my edge. I'm checking it on the outside to make sure I got full coverage so I don't have a light gap. And I'm checking it inside to make sure I don't have a light gap against this bottom or this back portion here. Once the film is flowing freely, you can uh, feel pretty confident that it's, it's going to be ready to squeegee down. First thing I do is tack it down. And it's tough for you to see, but just trust me when I'm telling you, I'm tacking it down and I'm squeegeeing a little harder and a little harder where that ceramic lettering is. Most windows, small ones have it. Utilize that. And I'm going up with my strokes for the majority of, of the back edge here uh, because I don't want the piece to slide down and give me a light gap. So if I do most of my squeegeeing in an upward manner, holding kind of holding the piece double checking my edge uh, i'm not going to press really hard i'm really lightly going to go uh, and get this 
top edge, dry it out best I can, get the moisture away from there. Um, because I want this piece to be tacked into place, and this upper corner is it's umero uno. That's right. It's like first priority. It's like now I got this in a pretty decent position. I'm gonna a little bit more pressure, and I'm gonna go back. I don't want to go down because I had uh, lots of experiences in the past where I. Uh, I have, I squeegee down and I move the piece. So then I'm going to take my card with the slip tape. And I apologize if you couldn't see any of that. Eh, maybe you caught enough of it. I got it, my card with the slip tape. And that's going to even uh, more so remove moisture from in this corner. I want to get all this moisture out of there. And like I said, that window you explained on the Camry, this is the same thing. It's the hardest window on the car. And you would think because it's small that it's the easiest, but it's the hardest one to position. It's the hardest one to tack down. It's the hardest one to maintain a cleanly install on. It's really takes practice to get these, and it turned out perfect. So I'm going to double check it on the outside to make sure I like it. Uh, make sure there's no bubbling. And I feel really good about it. So I'm, I'm done there. All right. So we're getting close here to the end. Uh, I'm going to put these other couple pieces in. Uh, hang tight there. I'm moving the camera around. Going to get you set up here. And uh, so now I got I got to file this side too. Uh, which I'm going to have a customer come walking in here at 3, so I got about 20 minutes. And I'm probably more than 20 minutes away from being done here, so uh, whatever. It's the way it is, hey. Now, I didn't even take this panel off because I was blabbering with you guys. So I still have to take this panel off. So no biggie. I'm going to show you how quick this can be done. Again, I'm going to pry behind this cover in the back. Every, every door is different, man. Uh, you, could, you could message me and tell me what you're working on, and maybe I could help you uh, understand where you need to focus your attention. So I'm going to need my light. I can't I can't see where the heck I'm where the screws are here. All right, that's one. That's two. I need my magnet now. All right. All right. So I got those all out of the way. I need a little magnet here to get this screw out of the way. Kind of fell in a little crevice in there. And then I'm just going to reach behind this. Not, not all cars are that easy. You need a panel popping tool for a good number of them. But the Hondas are a pleasure. Mm. Now I can't find my my hole there. Here, I'm going to pick this one so I can see it. Any hole will do just to hold that panel in place. I've got that out of the way. Let's get to scrubbing again. All right. So I'm going to do the same procedure. I'm kind of picking up the pace a little bit here because I just realized this dude's coming. I got a whole nother car over there to finish. Uh, I got this side job coming, or not side job, but retail job. And I can feel a little bit of adhesive again down here that was below the gasket. 
I mean, is it a big deal if there's a little adhesive below the gasket? Not really. But what if it's right on the edge of the film and the film catches and it peels because it was on, it didn't have an intimate uh, adhesion, you know? I mean, so why not just go through uh, the extra steps to make sure that it's, you know, completely free of adhesive and we can get a real solid install. Why not? I mean, I you know, I can't tell you how much time I wasted in the beginning uh, years fiddling around, doing things that didn't make sense. So it's so much better to just copy somebody who knows what they're doing. I mean, I do the same thing, right? If I'm gonna, I, what I've, you know, I learned how to change my toilet at home and many other things, but I didn't go and buy a toilet and then start the job and then just start the job and then try to figure it out. I went and I know enough now where I went and I like, I need to know how this gets done from beginning to end and then I'll do the job. And so it's a lot better to just, you know, copy someone who knows what they're doing and take advice from somebody and it's much, much better for you. Like I tell customers all the time, I don't really do a good job for you. I do a good job for me because I, it drives me insane if something doesn't turn out uh, good. And if you're going to get into this business and you don't have that sort of mentality, like if you can just slap window film on a window and it doesn't bother you that it didn't turn out good, then I don't. I don't think you should do this job because I don't think you're going to be successful. You should probably find something else that's not so detail orientated as window tinting because this is like you want it to turn out good. You want to do a good job and make people happy with your work and all that kind of stuff. Let's see. Uh, Oh, he says, uh, j says he did a 96 Chevy C10. Oh, boy. Yeah, from what I can think of, that has, uh, I don't know if you had a, sl a sliding rear window or if it was a uh, one piece, but you got rubber gaskets and no ceramic on the back window, from what I remember. And uh, that's that's kind of one that could really be uh, a frustrate, frustrating time. Now, I put this piece in. I don't even know why I did that because I'm talking to you guys. But normally, I like to put them in from the bottom first. For some reason, I, did, I went top down. I don't know. It, hopefully, it'll be all right. But it's just something that I'm not 100% focused on what I'm doing because I'm talking to you guys so let's see if I if I make a mistake I'll have to rip the film off cut a new piece quick these pieces are super finicky I can't even tell if I have this in yeah okay I'm good I just want to make sure that it's oh it's in the right position. So I, because again these things are so easy to uh, move, and end up with a light gap or you know a problem. So I'm going to take my time. I'm going to double check. I'm going to make sure that I uh, like my position. I'm going to squeegee in the proper direction, mostly going upward in the beginning so that my piece stays butted up against the top. Um, I do have a couple little specks of dust. I... I think I got like two, but it looks like I could probably iron them out so I can heat them up and squeeze the air out and they won't be visible. 
very common practice that you better get good at. Um, oh, unless you're perfect, which I don't think anybody is perfect. So that's probably not possible. All right. So I'm feeling pretty good with that. Um, I'm going to go over this even a little bit more with my hard card with the slip tape and just get that uh, ironed ironed out as best I can. Get this edge one more time. Make sure all the moisture is away from it. Double check. I like what I see. All right. And there we go. That's that. Now, in addition to what I've already done, I've got to do a sun strip on this car. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to real quick, I'm going to finalize, and I'll turn you guys so you can see a little bit. But I'm kind of moving a little faster now. I, uh, I'm going to have to unlock my door here in a second. So I'm just going to finalize these two windows and get them cleaned and smudge-free. I'm going to put my seats back uh, and I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything finalized here so the last thing I have to deal with or focus on is this sun strip I need to go in the front seat for that I'll show you so I want to get this in place I'm gonna get my the key out so the battery doesn't go dead all right, and uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to finish, and I'm going to put these door panels back on, and I'm going to finalize uh, these doors as well because there's no point in me having to focus on this later. So I got this panel. Uh, actually, <laughs> I got to do this window yet, guys. See, now I'm, I got to do this one yet. So, see how that works? No problem. That's how it is when you got 7 million things on your mind and a, co a customer coming. The only reason I'm concerned or pushing myself a little bit is because this guy mentioned how long it was going to take. I don't know if he's got something else going on, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to reset my mind here and slow it down because otherwise I'm going to make a mistake. So it's good training as well. The guy can wait. If he doesn't want to wait, then I can reschedule him or whatever. It is what it is. So I'm getting this piece in place. I got you twisted and looking at the wrong thing right now. One second. I'm going to get you back focused over here. All right, there you go. Now I got this piece in place. I'm just going to put that uh, edge over the top a tad bit. This will just take a minute, so it's no big deal. All right, and I'm really squeegeeing very gently. I don't want this piece to move, and I probably could have went a little bit lighter on the soap. Um, and there's a fine balance there of, you know, getting too much soap versus not enough soap. So... Uh, I don't know what you're using, Jay Wise. If you're using baby shampoo, then that's a little bit different mixture. It depends what brand and all these other things come into play. I turned the key off when I still need the key. How do you like the live stream, man? There's no way of hiding anything here. This is an edited video. <laughs> but it's no biggie. I don't know if you watched that other one the other day. I did a live stream and I... I had to redo the back window. 
Uh, and that's just life, man. That's just how this business is, right? So it is what it is. I had to redo a back window, and I did it right live on air. I'm not trying to hide nothing. And I can share what I know, but at the same time, I'm a human being, and I'm making mistakes. And try to try to do this, man. Try to run your mouth and uh, tint windows, play around with the camera and all this stuff all at once. You're going to make a mistake. So I'm going to just heat this top edge again. All right. Gonna give it a good liberal. It doesn't take a lot of heat. I don't need to make it really hot, but I I just warm the window up a good amount where I can still put the back of my hand against the glass without getting burnt. If you go much hotter than that, you'll end up melting the film. So I'm gonna just squeegee real gently this top edge before I actually do that paper towel thing. Uh, I want to make sure I got all of this moisture out of the way here. Then I'm going to do the uh, top edge. I'm going to roll this over. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the moisture up there, and then I'm rolling it over the edge, and I'm catching it with the paper towel. So I'm literally drying it out of the area. If you roll, If you put the film up too high, you can't do that. So you got to watch out and watch how much, uh, how far over the edge you go with the film. So don't go over the film, uh, over the edge of the film too much. Now I've got my small ray uh, file, and I'm going to get this corner started. You, you, in my opinion, I, I you got to have two files. You got to have the small jewelers, and you got to have this other bigger one see how I'm going mostly straight up if you go to like if you like I already got this filed but if I do this real side swipe action you'll be more likely to rip the film and I uh, have to start over again. So if you keep it kind of like in a one inch section and just go upward, you'll have a better chance at doing this. All right. All right, and you can see this time it's really fine. It's hard to even see what I got there, but some of it fell on the floor outside. I'm going to check my edge, look for burrs. I'm going to go over with a little bit more side action now. All right. I keep my uh, – here's the rest, okay? Here's the rest. See that? That's what we've removed. And now we've got a beautiful filed edge. Really professional look. I charge extra for that. Uh, I, have, uh, I have my pricing set up so that I have a cheaper price point for people that don't want to spend a lot of money. And then you have cut out certain things, you know. People, some people don't want filed edge, don't care about it, don't need it. And so I don't offer it, and I charge a more uh, reasonable amount for a job that doesn't include filing the edge. If you're going to spend an extra half hour on the car, then you got to charge for that, right? So what I do, I charge 50 bucks for a full car to do the filed edging, 25 for a two-door. I get 40 bucks for a sun strip. Different markets, different areas might be more. I don't know what your market dic dictates, but that's kind of a it's a fair amount in my area. So now 
I am going to get this panel back in place, right? A little bit of moisture came off that gasket only because I got it wet originally. These uh, panels are really a pleasure to put back into place. Uh, I'm going to get this here. I got three screws at the bottom. Hondos are really a uh, breeze. Generally, uh, well, I'm having a hard time finding this hole. Up. Uh, uh, what's up with that? Let me get my flashlight here. Just as I say, Hondas are pretty much a breeze. I yeah, there it is. Okay, yeah. Just as soon as I say Hondas are a breeze, guess what? Hondas are a pain in the rear. <laughs> <laughs> so then this kind of uh, goes up in there just at the right angle and snaps into place and that's that's done and then all I got to do is focus on uh, this back or this sun strip which I will share with you guys since you're here uh, I'm gonna leave this camera over here now, guys. Uh, I'll show you the sun strip, uh, but I'm just gonna leave that camera there for now. You can, you know what I'm doing. So uh, hang in there. I have to unlock my door here. Okay, it's unlocked. I got this guy coming at some point here in the very near future so this guy i feel bad for these people i tried to tell him hey uh you're, you're going from 35 to 50 percent i charge a good amount of money uh i charged 50 bucks for that stripping which this is a friend from the car dealership it's his little brother's car whatever so normally i would charge a hundred bucks to strip a whole car uh, although i didn't I didn't do the back window, so it's not really a whole car. But anyways, I'm charging a decent amount of money. And the guy's literally going to get the car back, and he's going to say, uh, what What did you do? Because <laughs> literally, it's really not going to look much different. But <laughs> you, sometimes you just can't, you can't argue with people. So, uh. Guys, give me one second. I'm going to hit the bathroom. Yes, I am doing a live stream, and I'm going to go to the bathroom. All right, guys, still got three watching. Jay Bird in the house, he says. Uh, I'm using, uh, Jay Wise says, uh, I'm using Palm Olive. Hey, Jay Bird's got to join Facebook so he can join the Facebook group at now uh, Tint Academy. Go join that, Jay Bird, please. And then Jay Wise, join up there. You guys could uh, hook up as well. And Jay Bird's been tinting for 20 years, so. He's no slouch, and he'll be an asset in the uh, Facebook group there, uh, sharing what he knows. But guys, bear with me here, because I'm going to switch out my film here, and I'm going to make sure th uh, that I have. Uh, I'm actually going to put my sunstrip roll in, so I can. Uh, all right, there we go. I'm going to put my sunstrip roll in my plotter here and get myself ready to cut this sun strip so I can slap this in there and yeah I had a late start today too I had an appointment at the uh, the accountant's office 
So I am going to end up working a little later here today, but it is what it is. Uh, all right, we got a full-blown sun strip piece here. I'm going to grab some towels. And uh, Jaber, there's a link up above. That's ah, too late now. I'm going to slap this sun strip in and I'm going to be done. But uh, I was hoping that somebody was going to join in the hangout today. And uh, it would have been nice. I would. It would have been nice if it was a uh, Jay Wise. Hey Jay Wise, let me know. Uh, 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 either one of you guys, if you guys are down for a private hangout, maybe you'll be more inclined to join in, and we can do a private hangout. That would be cool. Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm gonna get a drink here. All right. All right. So, let me give, I'm going to shorten this thing again so I can give you guys a better angle on this sun strip action here. Let's see. Let's see what we can end up with here. Uh, maybe we can. Yeah, that's not too bad. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, this guy, this is one of these twists and turns, I think, right? No? I think so. What the heck? I think, oh, this one maybe just, yeah, it slides up. No screwdriver or nothing needed. Just slides up. Some of them twist. Some of them slide up. Some of them you need a screw, Fords. Some of them you need a special tool, and if you don't get the tool, they'll you'll break the windshield. I already broke a windshield, guys. So... I actually cracked the windshield not long ago. So I'm going to get this piece ready here. I'm in a hurry, so I'm done moving that camera around too much. But I'm going to get this piece ready so I can clean and slap, and I'll be out. Uh, once I got the customer here, I'll entertain him and shoot the breeze with him. So... uh we're almost there. He could walk in any minute, actually. So I'll uh, I'll tell him, hey, I'm doing a live stream. Just hang out. No biggie. All right. So what do we got here? I got this. I need my scrubby. Where's my scrubby? Here it is. Okay. So uh, I've got the piece ready already. And I'm just, I used to scrub down the whole windshield, guys. I don't do that anymore. Uh, I'll scrub what I need, clean what I need, and then I'll wipe the rest down. It's a lot more time uh, efficient. All right. So, like, I'm going to scrub what I need here. I'm going to make sure there's no adhesive. Uh, uh, that's that. Here's something here. Must have been a sticker here. So if I wasn't using this method of feeling with my hands, uh, in an effort to save time, I'm not even cleaning the outside of this window. Not even. Uh, I don't need to. Um, so uh, you could spend 30 minutes, 40 minutes doing a sun strip. And quite honestly, they just don't pay enough for that. So I don't bother. I have the most efficient uh quickest system that i i could imagine and that's the system i'm going with i'm going to spray a little extra in there to get dust away from that where the mirror connects and then that's it it's good it's ready to go so uh i may just be done in the nick of time here and uh so yeah guys excited I'm super glad. Now we got two regulars. We got a, we got lots of people watching, but a lot of people are watching after the fact, which is cool. Um, I'm honestly just trying to get content up. But uh, Jay Wise, I think you you'll probably be hanging out and be coming around. And yeah, I am going to see your progress, dude. Shortly, I promise. I'll help you. And uh, that's the point of this. Uh, that's why I like what Patrick's doing over 
at uh, window tinting business. And I'm going to give that guy props. I'm going to give that guy respect. And I'm going to give him a shout out. And I'm going to say his name on here because he's uh, genuine and he's trying to help people. And uh, that's cool. I'm just going to take it to the next level. And uh, it's, I actually know how to build websites and stuff. I'm not bragging or nothing. I just spent time fiddling around with that over the years. So, you know, you need to have those skills too. Otherwise, you got to pay people thousands of dollars to set up what I'm going to be setting up here. A membership site with those kind of capabilities. Uh, so... Yeah, stay tuned. So what I'm doing here is I'm just squeegeeing out best I can. I got, I can tell the doors just closed. So my customers here, I just heard doors closing. Uh, I'll just tell them to hang out. I can see the door opening. <sighs> One second. What's up, buddy? Hey, just have a seat. You can flip the light switch on. I'm on. I'm actually doing a live stream on YouTube right now. So just hang out. I'll be right with you. All right. So uh, we got that set up. And uh, I'm uh, – all right. So now I've wiped all the water out of the way best I could. And then I'm going to come back and polish later because it's uh, smeared up. But Hey, were you going to leave the car or are you hanging out? Okay, I'll be right with you. Okay, so he's hanging out. That's no problem. But what I'm going to do then, and I'm close enough to getting done here anyways. we got three watching. But I'm going to show you the rest of this. I got this sun strip in place. And I'm going to dry my edges. Because I don't want moisture sucking back in. And it's very common on these especially because you get water up in that top edge. And, and then uh, it wants to suck back under the film. So I got that. Then I can just slide this mirror carefully. I don't want to mess up my film now. Okay. I took the oil change sticker and I put it on the speedometer and I'm going to leave it there. Then the guy can deal with that a little bit later. So I got wipe up any remaining moisture. I'm pulling my towels out, all my tools and equipment, my scrubby. I'm going to leave nothing in there. Uh, put that stuff down here. And the last thing I'm going to do is polish this window and then... Uh, it's all done. This Civic is done, and I'd like to catch this guy's reaction. But what I'll do is I won't spray the whole window. I'll just spray the rag a little bit. I don't want to make a big, giant mess. And then what I'll do is I'll just I'll go over it with the wet side, even on the film. But I'm going to make sure that I don't go this way over the edge. I don't want it to peel up. So I'm going to do that. I'm just getting rid of all the smudge marks from the squeegee because especially in this cold climate, you go outside and the windows fog up and the, you see all the squeegee marks and it just looks horrid. So I don't want that. All right. And basically, I'm just cleaning this window best I can, polish it up. It'll be better than it was when it came in, no doubt. All right. And we're almost home free, guys. All right. Shut my key off. Uh, take my parking brake down. And we're all set, man. Uh, so my headset's coming off now. But uh, so we're all set, man. Um, super happy you guys stopped in today. I did this uh, impromptu uh, hangout here for Jay Wise because he 
said yesterday that he liked it, and I hadn't done one for a little while. So appreciate it, man. You guys seen a bunch of good stuff. I, f I did some filing for Jaybird. I showed you some stripping with the steamer, gave you some steamer information. Um, a ton of good stuff, some door panel removal, a sun strip. So it's been a really a, a info-packed uh, hangout, and I appreciate you guys coming by and taking a peek. And Jaybird says, yo, uh, JY says I have a 2017 Jeep Renegade to do tomorrow and turn and that back hatch window is intimidating. What's your advice on this particular vehicle? Uh, that, that just number one, if you're cutting, hand cutting a fresh blade every time you touch that glass or more importantly, get yourself some buttons and a button, clothing button. The button goes under the film, the blade goes on top of the film, so you're pinching. You're pinching the film in between the button and the blade. This way you're not cutting on the glass. Now you can't damage the glass at all, right? That piece needs tight tolerance in certain areas up in them top areas. Very finely, they need to be about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. Really take your time and very carefully go in there and cut. Um, and... Uh, you shouldn't have to take anything apart on that model, I don't think. Uh, that opens up a whole new can of worms if you do. Um, if this is somebody you know good, let them know anything can happen. Be honest with them. But uh, if this is somebody you don't know well and you don't feel comfortable doing the car, then don't do it. It's not worth it. Uh, uh, you'd be better off practicing on something, you know. If you know the person and they know you're learning and stuff and – Take some precautions, take your time, clean the glass right, cut that back window with a real tight tolerance. The side windows as well, they have a real tight tolerance. Uh, a lot of water gets puddled up in the bottom section of that particular side window, the side windows in the back there. So you can take paper towels and stuff them in afterwards to dry up that moisture. Um, the door panels are a little tricky to get off. I should make a video about that, but there's some full nuts and bolts they're not real it's actually a cover that pops off it looks like some big allen uh allen sockets they're not real bolts they don't hold anything in there it's a snap the whole cover pops off on the door snaps are tough they it feels like you're breaking them when you pull them apart so just take your time and be careful man that's the best i can offer you so uh Appreciate it. Thanks for the comments. Love you guys too. And I will talk to you soon. I got to get going. All right. All right. My guy, my friends, take care. We'll talk to you next time.